Connecting the Dots, Reliving Northwood's History with Carrie Bladorn. Throughout Wisconsin history, claims of the tallest trees in the state come and go, but all of them have been eastern white pines. The North Woods was once covered in millions of the towering Pinus strobus. By 1900, a majority of the old growth pines had been cut, some sources say over 98%, and sent to Wisconsin sawmills. Few were left growing in their natural habitats, but some of the giants were left alone, deep in the forest. Known to local woodsman Arthur Bilo, he had visited a white pine of tremendous size on state forest land as early as the 1930s. He often visited the tree with his family members and took photos. Art understood the rarity of such a large tree, and it became a special place to him. Sometime in 1940, the Rhinelander Logging Museum began looking for a big pine log to put on display. The idea was to preserve a relic of the logging boom and the forest primeval, still fresh but fading quickly from Northwood's memory. Members of the Logging Museum Committee made up of President Bud Ledbetter, Secretary Harley Forbes, and Fire Chief Henry Hansen began looking for the right specimen. With help of County Extension Agent Lee Sorden, they contacted Art Bilo, who had just the tree in mind. The big white pine he had been keeping an eye on for many years had been struck by lightning, and it was dying from the top down. Knowing it would soon pass away, arrangements were made with the State Land Commission to have it cut while most of the tree was still green, allowing its preservation and delivered to the Rhinelander Logging Museum. Newspaper articles were printed about the tree cutting in the weeks leading up to the job. The Logging Museum Committee received permission from the state and paid $15 for the tree. The giant was over 125 feet tall and reported to be 16 feet in circumference, or 6 feet 5 inches in diameter at its flared base. It was thought to be the largest white pine still standing in Wisconsin at the time, and before it died in the woods, it would be given a new lease on life. Arthur Bilo was selected to lead the effort. First, a logging road was cut through county lands and onto the state property where the tree was located, a mile away from the nearest roadway. A party made its way into the forest on Wednesday, March 5, 1941, to topple the soaring white pine. Art's crew was made up of fellow woodsmen Ed Schenick, Frank Farrell, and Andrew Seidel. Others reported to have attended the falling, aside from Arthur's crew and the Logging Museum Committee, were state timber cruiser J.J. McDonald, Francis Burke, forester Philip McDonald, conservation warden Harley McKee, fireman Bob Rayford, Mrs. Frank Greenwood, Sheriff Adolph Cushman, Marvin Belts, Dick Larson, and others not mentioned by name, a large felling party. A number of photographers were also at the scene to document the cutting, including Marion Hill, Norm Elkey, Ronnie White, and Harvey Becker. Doc Maloney brought along his film camera to take footage of the entire event. With sharp axes, they first cut a notch into the big tree in the direction they wished it to fall. Then they began the arduous process of making the back cut to bring the giant down. Many of the people that came out to witness the felling also participated in the sawing. At its widest point, the two-person cross-cut saw could barely move six inches back and forth, and one sawyer couldn't see the other on the far side. After several hours, the big pine came crashing down onto a bed of boughs prepared for its landing. Still, it broke off at about the 80-foot mark. Arthur's measurements noted a 16-foot log that would produce 1,300 board feet of lumber, and the next 16 feet, 1,000. The butt end of the log was found to be in poor shape, likely due to the lightning strike that traveled through it, causing its demise. Three days later, on March 8th, the crew came back for the huge task of transporting the log to Rhinelander. Using Ed Shannock's dually truck with heavy chains on the tires, a logging sleigh was positioned alongside the huge trunk. It was painstakingly rolled into position on the sleigh with padded chains and manpower. As it was transported out of the woods, the truck was unable to make the sharp turn onto Highway G, 
It was also feared the big hill in Rhinelander, known as the Hog's Back, could cause issues. So it was hauled through the community of Enterprise, where they stopped to swap out the sleigh for wheels due to lack of snow on the highway. Arthur Belo's two-year-old daughter, Arlene, was photographed on the giant log, as were members of the crew. It was then hauled out to Highway 45 North, guided by two police cars, past Pelican Lake and Monaco, down Highway 8 to Rhinelander. Its final destination was the Rhinelander Logging Museum, then located between the paper mill and the Wisconsin River on Davenport Street. Stone piers were constructed by Mason George Hansen. Blocking was provided by the Rhinelander Paper Company and assistance from the City of Rhinelander Public Works staff, the Rhinelander Fire Department, and Wisconsin Public Service was used to set the log into place. The end result was a 65-foot log-on exhibit, 14 feet 8 inches in circumference and approximately 4.5 feet in diameter. The huge log was visited and photographed by thousands of people in the following years, becoming known as Paul Bunyan's Toothpick. Around 1955, the Logging Museum moved to Pioneer Park in Rhinelander, and 40 feet of the toothpick went with it. It was on display there until it slowly succumbed to weather exposure sometime in the 1980s. Even though the log is gone, a remnant of its giant stump preserved by lightning and moss is still present in the Enterprise Forest today, giving us an opportunity to remember Paul Bunyan's toothpick, the hardworking woodsman, and the big trees that once covered much of northern Wisconsin. I'm Gary Bladorn, and this is Connecting the Dots, Reliving Northwood's History on Newswatch 12. Connecting the Dots, Reliving Northwood's History with Gary Bladorn. Thank you for watching Connecting the Dots, Reliving Northwood's History. If you have some history you'd like to see covered on the program, send me a message on my Facebook page, Carrie Bladorn, Northwoods Historian, or shoot me an email at northwoodshistorian at gmail.com.